Hi folks, my name is Chris. I am your Life Health Exam Coach. If you haven't checked us out already, take a look at lifehealthexamcoach.com. We're here to help you make sure that you pass your life and health exam, guaranteed. So check us out again at lifehealthexamcoach.com. And today we're gonna to be talking about annuities, important subject that is on that exam. So let's jump in and learn about annuities. What is an annuity? It is an insurance contract that's issued and distributed by financial institutions with the intention of paying out invested funds in a fixed income stream in the future. So this is a great product uh, that you can sell to your customers that helps them get a guaranteed income stream. So this is a valuable part of a person's um, you know, investment and you know, their portfolio and consideration for how to plan for those years after retirement. Some key terms here that you need to know about annuities. There's a contract owner. So, you know, it's a little bit different than an insurance um, contract. These are sold by insurance companies, but you have a contract owner here rather than a policy owner. And the contract owner is the one who pays the premiums and has those owner rights. So very similar idea, just a different name. So contract owner here is the one who's paying the premiums and owns the policy. Now the annuitant is the person who receives those annuity payments. So that's very important. Often, just like in life insurance, uh, the contract owner and the annuitant or the person who owns it and who is you know, receiving or is you know, covered in a sense uh, for the benefits are the same person. They don't have to be, but they often are the same. Then there's also a beneficiary here because annuities do have the potential to set up survivor benefits. Um, so that's a really nice feature of annuities. So you do and can name beneficiaries in annuities as well. All right, there's three main variables. So we talked about in other training, you know, the variables so you can really understand uh, the key moving parts um, inside of an annuity. Those three main variables are number one, the principal amount. So with an annuity, you are putting in a principal amount that is then going to gather with a set specific kind of interest rate. Now that can that can vary depending on the product, but it has a principal amount and then it's going to grow according to a certain interest rate. That's the second variable. The third variable is the length of the payout period because with an annuity, uh, the purpose here is for you to be able to grow money over time. Usually, you know, people start these. Uh, you know, when they're working, but they can actually start it right at the point of retirement as well. And this money can grow. And then in retirement, you're going to get this payout period. And that can be a defined length of time, could be the person's whole life. We'll go ahead and get into that, those variables, you know, how they work here in the next uh, few slides. But just remember these three main variables, that principal amount that gets put in to the annuity, an interest rate that defines how that amount grows. And then uh, number three is that length of the payout period. All those things are going to be a, you know, adjustable and can change the terms of that contract you know, um, and the cost and all those sorts of things. The other thing to really know, you know about annuities, there's two main phases and you will be tested on this if you take that exam. Annuities have what's called an accumulation period or growth period, like I was describing. And then they have the annuity period, which is also known as a payout, annuitization, or a liquidation. The so same idea here, just be familiar with these concepts and these terms. Accumulation period is that time of growth where that money that you've put in is going to grow. And then the payout period is the point when you start to receive the benefits of that uh, annuity and it's called annuitization or a payout period we're liquidating that so those are the two phases of annuities pretty simple in a way so the accumulation period um, can be defined as a single pay or a periodic pay as, as i mentioned before uh, some people will start their initiate that annuity 
um, at some point at, during their working life. And in that case, that's most often set up as like a periodic pay, much like life insurance where you, you know, pay, pay monthly on it. You can do the same thing with annuities where you're paying periodically um, and in order to contribute or to accumulate the sum that you're aiming for. The other way that you can address an annuity is called uh, you know, an immediate or single pay uh, annuity where that accumulation is happening in an instant. So you can fund that annuity immediately and then you can actually have the uh, annuity period uh, follow immediately after you've, uh, pretty soon right after you've done that single pay. So those uh, accumulation periods, then they vary by whether they're, you pay in over time or whether you pay in one single amount. So again, that other term that you need to know is immediate annuity. So that is uh, the, the phrase or the term for that kind of um, normally like that, that single pay. So, you know, people come into some lump sum of money or they have uh, money possibly in a different financial product and they want to turn that into an annuity so they can do that with this immediate annuity product. And then uh, with the immediate annuity, it's going to, uh, the annuity period is going to pay out within that first year. It can be actually as soon as within the first few weeks or 30 days of starting the annuity, it can you know, turn into the annuity period or begin its annuitization uh, almost immediately. So that's what immediate means is that you're going to have, you know, uh, an amount of money that's set up and then you can actually start receiving the benefits of that uh, relatively quickly. The opposite is, uh, as I was describing, is called a deferred annuity. Um, and again, this one could be a single pay amount, uh, but let's say you put in a single amount of money, but you didn't want to receive or have the, that payout happen right away. So you're deferring when you receive the payout. Um, it also could be that you're you know, accumulating or doing that over time as described before. So I may be paying this into this towards my retirement. And I'm deferring the payout period until after I have retired or some point in the future. And that is defined as at least one year. So a deferred annuity is where the payout's going to occur after a year. And that immediate annuity is when it's occurring before that first year uh, where you're receiving the payout. All right, here's some key facts. In the first years of annuity, cancellation creates what's called a surrender charge. So remember, this is a financial product. In order for um, an annuitant to receive the benefits, in a sense, they've got to hold up, you know, their end. They've got to uh, have put in some time. This is a time sensitive product. So that's why insurance companies set those up. So if you pull out really quickly uh, out of your annuity, you're going to face what's called a surrender charge. So it's designed for. The long term, you know, it's not a quick investment. It's, you know, again, designed for um, a, a long term plan for retirement. Now, only the owner can authorize uh, the surrender of annuity for its surrender value. So, much like a whole life policy, it will have, you know, a value to it that's either there immediately or it has accrued over time. And so it will have a defined surrender value to it. Again, only the owner is the one who can authorize that surrender and then, you know, receive its surrender value, whatever that is, you know, based on if there's a surrender charge and how much is in the actual annuity. So you can think of accumulation as being equal to the premiums or amount that you've put in to the annuity plus the interest or its growth over time. So it's those two factors, how much you've put in plus its growth minus any expenses or withdrawals. You are allowed to withdraw from uh, annuities, but again, if you do it too soon, you can face some expenses. And so, you know, the value is always gonna be um, based on this formula. The accumulation is gonna equal your premiums plus its growth and in terms of interest minus those expenses. 
and withdrawals. So there are a number of different payout options. These should look familiar to you if you've you know, sat in any other trainings that we've done on uh, life insurance. You know, we'll see some of these options really uh, look very, very similar. You can receive your payout in what's called a straight life manner. And that's very popular because that means guaranteed income for life. This is one of the benefits or uh, features of annuities that people like. You can really know in a guaranteed way, an assured way, how much money you're going to receive for your entire life, no, no matter how long you live. So that's a, a really nice feature and one of the benefits of an annuity, especially in that straight life option. So straight life is what it says. It is for your whole life that you receive those from the point when you annuitize until you pass away. Cash refund is another option. It's a guaranteed in for income for life. And then in this case, any balance uh, is paid to the beneficiary in a lump sum. So that's one of those kind of survivor benefits that I was mentioning earlier. You're going to have guaranteed income for life, just like in straight life. If there's any left over based on you know how long you did end up living, there's still some value left in that annuity that will be paid out in a lump sum to your named beneficiary. Installment refund is another option that's there. It's like the cash refund, except instead of a, a, a lump sum payout, the, the beneficiary is going to receive those that remainder in monthly payments. So in a sense, they they kind of become like the new annuitant, right? They're going to receive monthly payments. So again, that's another option, installment refund. One other option here is called life with period certain. So this is a life payout for the annuitant with a set uh, guaranteed amount for the annuitant plus the beneficiary. So that whenever you see that period certain, you know that the contract has defined a specific amount of time where they're going to guarantee a, a certain amount. And then whatever's remainder is going to be pay out uh, for the rest of that person's life. So it's a way of kind of guaranteeing um, a certain amount over a specified amount of time. And sometimes that's important to, uh, to a client. <clears throat> Another option is called period certain. Uh, it is a pure time period. It's defined as usually like 10 or 20 years uh, that's paid to the annuitant and the beneficiary. So how's that going to differ? Well, uh, depending, you know, the, the age at which the person annuitizes, you know, they're going to have a defined amount for that specific amount of time. So with a period certain, a pure period certain option, you could end up living longer than your payout. So it's not, you know, it doesn't have that guaranteed for your full life, but you're guaranteed for that period certain. So again, for some people, uh, that defined amount during that defined time, uh, and it could be a higher amount, right? So why would somebody do that? Why would they not want all of their payout to come, uh, you know, for their entire life? Because by condensing it into a specific amount of time, they could increase what that benefit is um, per month, and that may be attractive to them. Oh, lots of different options based on, you know, what people's needs are. Last one you see here is called joint full or two thirds or half survivor. So again, it's another way of slicing the payout options. Uh, this is when you have two or more annuitants. So with these policies, annuities, you can have two or more annuitants that are named. And in this case, it's gonna pay until the last one of those annuitant dies. So this is an option where, you know, uh, a, a married couple might use this, for example, to, uh, in a sense, guarantee that both of them receive payouts, you know, the way of guaranteeing income for both of their lives rather than just one. And then, you know, again, depending on how much they want to receive during that time, um, they can limit then the survivor payout to being two thirds or half the amount that either one of them receive. So again, you know, when you slice it up differently, it's going to make the numbers come up different. And, and this just gives people more options. You know, do you want more to be there for yourself and your spouse and some, but not as much there, uh, you know, for your beneficiaries? Uh, this is why there are all these different options to, um, you know, really make sure that you're covering 
all the needs of your different clients. All right, let's look at the investment options. Remember those two phases, there's a period of time in which your annuity is accumulating, it's growing. How and what can you choose for your investment options um, to get the kind of growth that you want? So you can have what's called a fixed option, and that's gonna give you a guaranteed rate of return, a minimum. Again, this is one of the things that's very attractive about annuities as opposed to something like you know, just investing in stocks. You know, there's no minimum guarantee, right? When you have, uh, when you're dealing with the stock market, with an annuity, you can define a fixed amount that you're going, a guaranteed rate of return that you're going to receive. Now, you can also have an option to do a variable rate of return, varying by investment. So you can have it um, that money be invested. Now, you do need a, if you sell one of these products that are variable. Um, does require a securities license because now you're selling uh, an investment product that's a little bit different than just a straight um, insurance product in a sense because it's going to be tied or related to specific investments. Another way of doing this, uh, you know, for your growth part for the investment is to what's called an equity indexed uh, option. So in that case, the rate of return is going to be tied to some stock index so that could be a little bit more stable than just the variable rate but again it will have some variation to it again why do people choose these different options because you know different options could yield a little more growth and you know if somebody's willing or wanting to take a little more risk in exchange for potentially more growth that's why they have these different options so uh, another term here is single life where there's only one annuitant. Remember I said there can be uh, two annuitants. So single life is when you've only named one annuitant. Uh, also, it, it, tax sheltered is another kind of uh, uh, investment option. Now this is limited to employees of religious or charities or educational institutions. So it's not available to everybody, only to people who work for those kinds of uh, organizations. Uh, let's talk taxation. Always important to understand how taxes work when you're talking about insurance products. Uh, remember, we talked about annuities are made up of premium plus interest, and that interest is uh, you know how how that money grows over time. So, in an annuity, the premiums, meaning the amount that you put in, uh, again either in a single basis or in an installment basis, money that you're paying in. That's also referred to as a cost basis. It's your cost. It's your money that you're putting in. So because it's your money and that's uh, after-tax money that you're investing, it's not taxed. The interest, on the other hand, is taxed when payout occurs. So during that annuitization uh, time, then you, know, the, you see there's going to be two uh, aspects to that payout, the money you put in and then also the growth. So the exclusion ratio is literally just that. It's calculating the premium, you know, excluding that premium versus those interests because it's going to be just the interest part that's taxed. So that calculation is done for uh, tax uh, reasons. And the main thing you want to remember here, uh, just like any insurance product, you know, if you're gaining value in it, that the amount that's gained is going to be where your taxation occurs. Now, I mentioned that you can make withdrawals from annuities. A, a partial withdrawal is, uh, you know, any money withdrawn is taxed as income. Um, before age 59 and a half, that income, that's taxed as income, plus you're liable to have to pay a 10% uh, penalty for that early withdrawal. So some of those rules are set up by the IRS, again, to uh, make sure that people are using annuities as a, a long-term or a retirement investment rather than, you know, a, a, a short-term investment or something that they capitalize it on earlier in life. And so, you know, again, these rules are set up uh, similar to other, you know, we've talked in other trainings about IRAs, you know, you have to be paying into this. And again, it's designed where you're going to receive that benefit um, during a, a a defined retirement age. All right, anytime you see like a 1035, 
exchange, and those kind of numbers immediately should shout to you, hey, this is an IRS uh, rule. And indeed, that's what it is. 1035 exchanges, or it's an authorized um, exchange on, you know, by the IRS. And it's defined as, you know, what happens when you shift money from one product to another? You know, is it taxed or is it not? So the 1035 exchange defines where you can make moves. You can take money from one product, financial product, move it to another, and it defines whether it's taxed or not. So if you already have money in one annuity and you move it into another annuity, there's no tax. That makes sense. It's a like-to-like -like sort of exchange. Uh, because annuity is an insurance product, it is sold by insurance companies. When you move from money from a life insurance product, remember, you, you know, if you've done our training on life insurance, you know, whole life insurance, for example, can have some cash value to it. So you could take that cash value, move it into an annuity, and incur no tax um, liability from making that move, making that exchange. You can also do that with an endowment. You take money from an endowment and move that into annuity. Um, that is a no tax exchange. So, you know, we've talked before about modified endowment contracts, for example. If you have one of those, you move it to an annuity, there is no tax liability. Now, keep in mind though, if you move money from annuities to a life insurance policy, that does not qualify for a tax-free exchange. I know those are both life insurance products, but again, this is set up by the IRS. So main thing you need to remember here is, you know, most of these moves in, uh, incur no tax liability. The only one that does if you move from annuity to life insurance. So make a note of that so you don't get uh, thrown off by that on the test. All right, another really important factor, just like all insurance products, is defining suitability, which always means you know, making sure the product is of value to the client that you're selling it to. And that makes sense you know, ethically and for all sorts of reasons to sell products that are suitable or make sense for your client. How do you do that with an annuity? Well, you really have to evaluate the, the investment related to their finances and their needs. And you got to consider the facts, you know, especially if you're making some sort of exchange. Uh, if you're, you know, moving money from one annuity to another, you're going to look for, is there any kind of surrender charge? Does that surrender charge, um, you know, is, is there a reason to uh, go ahead and incur that surrender charge? In other words, they're going to still come out ahead uh, once you've made that comparison. So you're, you're kind of comparing like interest rates. In other words, am I going to make a financial uh, advantage to this person will be is there a clear logical benefit from their, to move from one product to another you always want to be sure that there is some uh, definable benefit for them to make a move you know you're not making moves just for the sake of earning commission we all want to earn commission as insurance agents but we want to do that by doing the right thing and making sure that we're moving people into products that are creating a benefit for them, not a loss. So, you know, also you want to analyze what are their financial goals? You know, which one of those options we've talked about during the accumulation period, uh, the payout options, um, and, you know, making that or matching that to their particular needs is another part of the sale, another part of the analysis you do to help your customer. And so selecting the correct accumulation approach and payout approach all part of uh, the annuity sale. All right, that sums up what we have for you today on annuities. Hope that's been helpful for you. This will be part of what you're tested on if you take Life Health Exam. Remember to check us out on lifehealthexamcoach.com and we have all the topics that you need there to help you pass your exam. Hey, thanks for watching today.